Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and I figured one good Samurai Showdown 64 revisit deserves another, because today we're taking a look at Samurai Showdown 64 2, also known as Warrior's Rage. But it is not the same game on PlayStation 1, that is not a port, it shares a title, it's a different thing entirely. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, down below hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But it's always fun talking about the Hyper Neo Geo 64, and somehow with all my revisions, visits from my videos years ago, I never touched back on the two Samurai Showdown games, so we're remedying that today, and let's get right into the fun with Samurai Showdown 64 2. I will say of the two Samurai Showdown games on the Hyper Neo Geo 64, this is my least favorite of the two. Now that's not to say that the game is bad in any sense of the word, it just isn't my preferred version. Now they did a lot of things design wise with this game that pivoted from the original one and one is you no longer have a full 3D range of motion. It plays much more like a traditional 2D fighting game on a single plane. You just have a dodge into the foreground and background element going on. Now I liked the original system where you had that full ability to rotate 360 degrees around your opponent. It's just a different vibe but I wish that they had stuck with it because I think if they had done it a second time it would have been even better than the first game. Now of course this adds more characters, but what it tends to do is actually take away a little bit on the backgrounds and the visuals. This game feels more of like a small experience compared to the first game where you're going to be fighting multiple matches in the same arena with just a little bit of a different colorway change. But as far as the mechanics are concerned, it is Samurai Showdown. It has that same methodical sort of action to it where you really want to be patient and wait for that opening to get a heavy strike in. So in that respect, I absolutely do love the game. Now I know this game is divisive, as is the entire Hyper Neo Geo 64. People either seem to absolutely love it and enjoy playing it or think these games are terrible. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you guys think, but just remember just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you don't like it because a lot of times with these divisive games people try to convince me it's not good play what you want enjoy what you like i am happy for you if it's what you're into and you will see here that they do get some color change and you get that lightning in the background as well this game's darker it's moodier the colorways that they chose are definitely more muted it has a more mature kind of feel to it all around but you'll see here Again, the third match, we're just going to be fighting it in the same area. And that's one thing I wish the game didn't do. It kind of lessens itself on the background. And while they do look very pretty and they are dramatic, I wish there was more to be seen throughout the game. And it's basically going to always take place in the exact same order. Unlike the original game where you can get different stages in different orders. This almost always, I don't think I've ever seen it do anything other than step through the stages in the exact same order. It's a weird design decision that I'm just not 100% into, but the new characters are a ton of fun and it's great to have an expanded roster. And you do get different models depending on what variant of the character you choose. You get different costumes, different 3D models, everything does change. So it's like SNK put a lot of work into some directions of the game, like those models, but kind of maybe scaled back a little bit on the rest of the visuals and the backgrounds. But I will say, this stage here, after that explosion happened, everything burning in the background, and that flickering pseudo real-time lighting does look spectacular. But again, with the gameplay, if you've never played this game before, it's hard to convey in a video but the sense of weight that your characters has is quite dramatic. They feel heavy, they move slowly, but in a way that feels like a Samurai Showdown game just brought into 3D. Because the first game was not well received by classic SNK fans, and I could understand why that would be. It was no longer a 2D you know, fighting game taking place on a single plane. It changed basically everything, and I could understand where some people wouldn't be a fan of that. I absolutely love the transition to 3D, and I do love the original 2D games as well. I have all of them on AES, but it's just more of a fun thing with Samurai Showdown 64 too, and I do like the fatalities, how stylized it is when you just slice that character completely in half, and his torso slides away with a wet kind of meat sound in the background. But this game does really interesting things with the soundtrack, quote-unquote, as well, so go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds, and I'll be right back. あなたが戦っては逆効果です。いざ尋常に一本目勝負。<笑><笑><笑> 
I think you can understand now what I mean when it does interesting things with the soundtrack is in this level specifically there really isn't any musical underpinning to it you get the ephemeral sounds of that brook in the background kind of bubbling as well as the combat sound effects but you do not get any music which is not that weird of a thing for SNK to have done because the last blade and the last blade 2 have levels in which there isn't actually any music you just get those environmental sounds and I actually really do like that about this game for some reason or another, this game kind of feels both progressive and regressive at the same time. It definitely hones into what SNK players and Samurai Showdown fans really enjoyed, but it takes things away from the first game, like the full range of 3D motion. You still get the same characters with an expanded roster, and you still get basically the same moveset, but it basically dials it back into what fans really loved, while being very dramatic at the same time. So it's really a mixed bag, and this is the type of thing where if you ask one fan, they might say one of these games is their favorite, and if you ask another fan they might give you the exact opposite answer there's definitely something for all fans of snk and samurai showdown in the 64 games but it just depends on what you like as to what your favorite might be because mechanically it's an excellent fighting game that you're gonna have a ton of fun with and in a lot of ways i do like how dramatic they went with the vibe in this when these muted color palettes all of this drama in the background, almost this apocalyptic end of world feeling. It's definitely selling a tone and a vibe that I think really works. But for me personally, I enjoy the bright, vibrant colors of the first game. It just feels more like a proper Samurai Showdown game. But I can't deny the fact that slicing somebody in half from the torso is not a fun thing. And that's something you're going to get in Samurai Showdown 64 too. And I personally absolutely love it. And there's definitely more work put into this one as well in the level transitions. There's just a little bit more visual storytelling and a little bit more flair in the title cards before you get into a battle. And a little bit of the camera work and angles they've chosen are a little more dramatic. But again, the backgrounds are just sparser. There's a lack of life, but that does go into the story. And it does really work. It's just different. And that's what always happens because I played these back to back. And if I don't play them back to back, I don't really remember which one's my favorite. But if I capture one than the other, I definitely remember the original is more to my liking. But I did tell you I would give you some actual soundtrack music to listen to because the game does have really good soundtrack for the levels that have it. So go ahead and listen for like 30 seconds this time. I'll be right back and we'll finish the video. I do like that track and it sounds like something that would be straight out of a Konami Castlevania game and I will say the music in this is very understated and arethral, way more so than the original Samurai Showdown 64 and most of the music in the Samurai Showdown games on the Neo Geo proper, but I really do like the music. But again, you'll see here, it's a different color but it's the same environment. In some ways it feels like maybe this was a quicker made game compared to the original game on the Hyper Neo Geo 64 because the fan reception of that was not positive so maybe SNK wanted to get something onto the market that they thought fans would be happier with and would help sell more Hyper Neo Geo 64 cabinets because this does have the feel of something that was a quick turn and burn to try to right a perceived wrong even in these like intercuts here with the boss it's just a photo that's scaling into the background until you get to the next arena it looks good but clearly that wouldn't take much time to make a 2d image to scale into the background but I will say here 
that heart looking thing in the background pulsing and it has like a heat wave over it it is a really good look and it's certainly dramatic and that's what this game kind of comes down to is the drama of it the gameplay is excellent it has that weighty strike where one blow will change the tide of a match but it also brings the drama to the matches by making them feel darker and grittier and just a little bit more grungy all around and it is a fun thing and I will say finding this game is easier than finding the original Samurai Showdown 64 this one definitely must have sold more because if you're looking for one of these two games it's relatively easy to find now and again a copy of this game if you're looking for the original you better have safe searches everywhere because it's going to be very difficult to find it but that special that my opponent was priming up there was poorly timed because he just took a foot to the face and lost the entire match because of it but that's what this game comes down to is timing your opponent loves to block so seeing those openings or using a melee attack to create them is going to be important and trust me i know i am not an expert in this game in any way some people always say hey you're playing this fighting game but you're not amazing at it the reality is I can't be good at every single game, but that doesn't mean I can't have fun, nor can you. And you can play this in MAME today. I did the video on Hyper Neo Geo emulation in MAME, and it has improved. And while the soundtrack is not there yet, the gameplay is, and you can 100% check it out. Now, in my revisit of Samurai Shot on 64, I said it's probably the easiest final boss in any SNK game. Well, the sequel definitely rectifies that because this final boss will just completely obliterate you time and time again. I can usually get past it, but I was on like my sixth credit and I realized it just wasn't my day. But that's what happens when you play a lot of fighting games. Sometimes you are on and sometimes you're not. And today definitely wasn't. But this is a very interesting game. It is a sequel to the original that changes a lot of things that I love, but apparently most fans didn't. So maybe I'm just the odd person out here. But leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. We're done with Hyper Revisits, and we'll see you next Friday for something different. Bye-bye.